the vision that God gave uh, this early this evening when we began to worship, the, I saw the angels coming and marching in in order, and they just lined up around the perimeter of the sanctuary. And each one of them had a tray, a round tray, like a plate in their hand. And in that plate was manna, or is manna. Can you receive this tonight? And although it may sound kind of silly and ridiculous, that's Old Testament, no. I'm telling you, God's here tonight, fresh manna. God's going to feed your spirit man today, and your spirit man is going to become strengthened by the words we speak and by the actions we take. Amen? And tonight is a night for every one of you. It's a very specific night. God ordained for you to be here tonight, that you would receive what he has for you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen? So we want to ask you right now to remove every, any distraction that's going on, things that are going on in your mind right now, the things that the enemy is attempting to do to bring discouragement in your lives, uh, lies, deceptions, anything that has attached yourself from, from the world, just shake it off right now, that every distraction in the name of Jesus, by the resurrection power of our Christ, and by the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lamb of God, that every distraction be eradicated and destroyed out of our minds, that our attentions would be focused on Jesus Christ and Him crucified, the power of the cross, the power of His living word. That even in this tonight, Lord, you become our advocate to show us uh, this area of surrender, total surrender in Jesus' mighty name. I need one person to agree. That's all. Amen. All right. There's somebody at home right now uh, watching online, live stream here. Somebody uh, watching. I see you sitting down in front of your TV, and you feel this, you feel this weight on your chest. It's the hand of Yeshua. He's there with you right now. That weight you feel on your chest is his hand upon your heart. And very thing that you ask him to do in your heart, to bring, to bring healing into that area of your heart, he's doing it right now as we speak. Amen. This is his surrender to you tonight. In Jesus' mighty name. Two people in the sanctuary, same thing. Two people, two people here in the sanctuary right now. That weight you feel on your, your chest, that's the hand of the nail-pierced hand of Jesus. Healing your heart. Right now I see disappointments being being removed. Those things that the enemy try to put on you to bring disappointment. A word of knowledge for you tonight, even those lies and the deceptions. Right now, you're, you're, you're in a situation to where, I, I'm, I won't go into all that. You're in a situation right now, God's telling me to tell you, he's moving on your behalf. In the spirit, he's moving on your behalf. And you're going to see the evidence of what you ask God to do for you come to pass. That's his promise to you tonight. That's the power of his word. Amen? Amen. All right. This is my surrender. Every distraction is removed. Amen? Amen. One, two. <laughs> Every distraction in your mind has been removed. Amen? All right. Here we go. We're going to step in. Keep wanting to get into that. Before you leave here tonight, Holy Spirit is going to speak to you. And He's going to reveal to you how precious the anointing that He's put on your life is. How powerful that anointing is. That you would come to a place to fulfill what God has asked you to do for Him. First and foremost, for yourself of others who crossed your path. How powerful and how precious that anointing of God is in your life. Here's the prophecy. T. 
to you, my beloved, to you in whom and who, to you in whom I love unconditionally. As I continue to draw your attention by speaking to the lives of lives of my servants, my prophets, understand the words being released are to give you understanding to expedite the return of my son Jesus to receive you, his bride. The now movement of the Holy Spirit is to confirm my love towards humanity with the evidence of this final harvest of souls intended for my kingdom. Do not allow the current situations operating in the earth distract you from entering into a rhythm of sounds, prophetic sounds, cycles of compositions, arrangements intended for this end time move of Holy Spirit. Let this word settle in your spirit. Allow Holy Spirit himself to confirm in you of how, of how this now word in what I prepared my church to experience. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of my glory, just like the waters cover the sea. In this now dispensation of my spirit, all the evidence of what I am preparing my church to experience will be the catalyst, the substance that will bring an increase of understanding with knowledge of how to enter into this arena, this field of souls to enter into my kingdom. From this dispensation, prodigal sons and daughters will, gl will gladly and with, without struggle return to my altar of repentance. The unsaved will flood this altar for their salvation. Your loved ones who have become distant to you will return with a heart of forgiveness. From this dispensation will come the evidence of my exousia, my delegated, my dunamis power operating in you and through you. From this, you will cause, oh, from this you will cause the lame to walk, the blind to see, cause both the deaf to hear physically and spiritually to what the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to them. Out of your mouths shall flow rivers of living water to open prison doors and to set the captives free. Nothing shall be held back from you to expedite the wealth of what my kingdom in this earth has for the lives of you, my, my kingdom people, and to those who call upon the name of my beloved son, Jesus, says the spirit of the living God. Can you receive that tonight? And so... Last Monday night service, we gave a word or message on uh, coming out of the cave. The title was Come Out of the Cave. And in 1 Kings 19, Elijah it explains that Elijah ran from Jezebel because of fear, because of a threat of fear. That spirit of fear sent Elijah to a destination that God did not intend or had in mind for him to go to. It was not the will of God for Elijah. And Jehovah spoke to Elijah and reminded him, in all the noises, the sounds from the elements of the earth, the wind and the earth shakes, the fire, they were not from God. But God spoke to Elijah and says, but it was in a still small voice. Somebody say still small voice. It was in the still small voice of God that Jehovah was speaking to him, telling him to go back to where God intended him to be, to complete the assignment. To complete the assignment, the task that God purposed for his kingdom and for his kingdom people. In the message of come out of the cave, the additional referencing during last Monday night service was, uh, came, uh, excuse me, came from the life of Jonah. 
Jonah's act of rebellion towards God because of his anger towards God. Hear this, saints. Jonah hated the Nevites. Nevites, excuse me, because they were enemies of his people. And Jonah, watch this, Jonah's personal sense of justice was against him. His personal, come on, it wasn't God. It was his personal justice against uh, the, the people of Nivea. And the Bible explains here as he break it down that it was that root of bitterness that aggravated that spirit of hate in Jonah. It was God only who would be able to deliver Jonah from that root of bitterness and anger. The directive God gave to Jonah was to go to Nevia, was to present a word of repentance, the act of surrender. Somebody say render, surrender. surrender. That they would be delivered from God's judgment, revealing his compassion towards them. And one of the overarching all embracing messages from the book of Jonah is compassion. Somebody please hear this. Because you will not be able to go forward and do what God is asking you to do without the compassion of God in you. Because when you get on the scene or you get in a circumstance or a situation or you see somebody through the natural eye, it, it's innate within us to begin to want to judge them by what we see in the natural. But it's always God's compassion in us that will reveal to us what God is asking you to do and to speak into life. It doesn't matter what they look like, their ethnicity, whatever it is. It is this, this great compassion of God's heart towards us that we need to re reveal and show to other people. Amen? And the Bible says that Jonah was a prophet. And even though he had let God down in numerous ways. Can you imagine that? A prophet of God letting God down? Oh, yeah. Anyway, that's a whole other teaching. Even though that Jonah had let God down in numerous ways, he was still, for, he was still forgiving. God was still forgiving because God showed him the unlimited love and compassion he had towards Jonah. God also modeled forgiveness and mercy for Jonah in how God dealt with other people. Hear this tonight, beloved of God. The only way God's plan for Nebia through, uh, through the life of Jonah's deliverance was that jo Jonah had to surrender to God to do what God is requiring of him. And remember, he had an attitude. He was angry at God. I'm not going to do what you... I, I don't like those people. I don't like what you're asking me to do, so I'm out of here. God says, fine, go. He let him go. You know the story. Before you know it, he finds himself in the belly of a whale. Amen? Amen. In both examples in the life of these two prophets, along with so many others, is the act of surrender. Now, we've been targeting this for the last month, and we've been having altar calls every Monday night service. But tonight, God's going to move a little differently. There's still an altar call. I mean, there's still an altar for surrender here, but God's going to move something in, in, in a very different way tonight. That's why he brought you here. Those of you who've come up to the altar before in these last Monday nights, he's setting you up. I mean, you know, it's good to be set up by God. He's setting you up. He's setting us up tonight so we can receive what he has uh, for us. Amen? In both examples, in the lives of these two prophets, along with so many others, is the act of surrender. Abraham surrendered to God with the life of Isaac. God gave Abraham a substitute, a ram to be sacrificed for the life of Abraham's beloved son Isaac, Genesis twenty-two thirteen. Moses surrendered to the bush that burned but was never consumed. The great I am to deliver Israel from their 400 years of bondage to slavery. Exodus 3. Yahshua surrendered to the great I am to lead the Israelites to the promised land. Now, think about this. You think you had a task? You have a task before you? Think about this. 
One man's surrender, Yahshua, one man's surrender to lead over one million people, to step into a land overflowing with God's promised provisions. Read it, Yahshua chapter 1. Naomi's surrender to Ruth to serve her and Ruth's surrender of everything she gained, all of her possessions, giving them all to God. Ruth 1, chapters 1 to 4. So the question we have tonight is, will you walk with us tonight through this message? Who's us? Me and the Holy Spirit. Will you walk with us tonight through this message that God is offering us? So we need a response. God knows you're with us, but I need to know you're with us. David is a shepherd boy to surrender to the call to be a king, anointed by the prophet Samuel in 1 Samuel 16. Ezra and Nehemiah surrender to rebuild the walls surrounding God's great city, Jerusalem. Ezra 4, Nehemiah 2. The Bible says that from Solomon to Isaiah, from Jeremiah to Ezekiel, their surrender to God first gave them the ability to the high call of God placed upon their lives. So we've got a question for you, and I don't need an answer from you tonight. Do you think what God has asked you to surrender to you is too hard, too difficult? He's here. Come here. The Holy Spirit is here to make your surrender unto God simple, easy, and without any discomfort. Amen, Brother Michael. Amen. I'll preach to myself. <laughs> Let's ask you to consider the lives of the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Their surrender to God and not to another king. The miraculous took place. Thrown in a furnace, a fire. Not one, the Bible says, not one hair on their head was singed. They came out, didn't even smell smoke on them. Come on. Daniel's surrendered to God in spite of being put in a den of lions. And these are only examples in the Old Testament. Can we continue? Come on, can we continue before we anoint you tonight? And allow God to speak into your lives. To the surrender of Mary, Jesus' mother, God's chosen. From the salutations, the greetings of Gabriel, the archangel. A word of knowledge that she would birth a child that would become the Savior to the world. Are you ready to celebrate Christmas 2023, saints? Her verbal surrender. Luke 138. Let it be in me according to thy word. To the call for surrender in the lives of God's chosen 12. The gospels of Matthew. In the gospel of Matthew. From the surrender of over 500 both Jews and Gentiles sent to an upper room with only 120 remaining until the fulfillment from the outpouring of the Holy Spirit himself uh, came to pass. Surrender. Surrender. I'm going to kind of jumpstart this here. Please hear the words coming out of these lips of clay. Your surrender. Those of you that are online. Your surrender on that day of your confession unto God. Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart, be Lord of my life. That's surrender. Your first act of surrender unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Don't you think God's going to honor that? I said, don't you know God's going to honor that? We've got a note here and a few more, a few more examples here. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. Kind of had a little 
fun time with the Holy Spirit today. So when you read the scriptures, you understand that God had spoke to his son, Jesus. Jesus spoke to his disciples and says, I'm out of here. I got to go back to my father. But I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send you another comforter, the Holy Spirit, who will lead you and guide you into all truths. Amen. And so now, here's an opportunity, and I just kind of got a, a fun thing with this, is that here, the, the three of them are speaking to each other, and, you know, the, the day of Pentecost has arrived. And now the Holy Spirit says, man, I get to do this thing today? I get to pour out my spirit upon your sons and daughters so that they may prophesy? Come on. There's an excitement in the atmosphere. Even the Holy Spirit himself is excited. Now he gets to fulfill the very promise that God promised his people that the Spirit of God, as they went to an upper room to get quiet and be alone from God and be separated from all the confusion, that he would come upon that people and he would pour his Spirit up out upon them and that they would begin to speak in languages that are of the Spirit. Amen? The idea that as he pours out his, oh my God, as he pours out his spirit upon flesh, they begin to prophesy. Not only that they would prophesy, that they would be able to lay hands upon the sick. Come on! So that they would recover. They'd be able to preach the good news of the gospel of salvation. Amen? Opening up blind eyes, unstopping deaf ears. That's you. God empowered you for such a time as this. And please, don't, don't neglect the, the fact that we come to church and we, we come to the services here at Genesis or whatever church that you attend and whatever pastors you're under. Don't, don't, don't underestimate um, the power of God that is in you. There's more to what God has asked you to do than what you can think or ask. That was the purpose of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So we've got to get out of this mindset. We go to church on a Sunday, Monday night, or, or whatever it is, and we're comfortable. We go to church. We do our thing, and then all of a sudden, we're out. And we go about our, our daily lives. Hallelujah. There's more to the call of God upon your life than just coming to a church service. Somebody say surrender. surrender. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul of Tarsus, as extreme as it was for him to come to the surrender to Jesus to become Paul, God's apostle, he, became, he becomes God's witness to what would be impossible for man to do, becoming possible through God. To the seven churches in the book of Revelations, their surrender to the precepts, the commands of, of his disciples to further God's kingdom in the earth. To the ecclesia, the church of Jesus Christ, to the bridegroom's bride, you, and to every believer. Here's another question. What will be our surrender during these latter days before Jesus returns? You have to decide. It's between you and God. Remember last, last week's prophecy? That there's a sound, a symphonic sound hovering in the atmosphere, being released as a continual songs of worship and praise from you, my beloved, ascend unto my throne room of glory. Abba has each one of us here tonight to help us out. He's here tonight to help you out and to help me out. His word for tonight is for understanding and direction. To lead us daily to this altar of surrender. Tonight's message is part of that prophetic promise. What is your worship and praise unto God? The believers surrender to worship. What is your surrender to worship Jesus in spirit and in truth? The believers surrender to praise. What is your pr surrender to praise him when your faith is being attacked? The believers surrender to surrender to God. What is it that God is asking you to surrender to him? Is it an idol? So can we go get, get down and dirty tonight? Amen, Brother Michael. Okay, is it an idol? What is God asking you to surrender tonight? Is it an idol? Something that you have put ahead of God? Is it a celebrity? Is it an apostle or a prophet? Is it an addiction? 
substance abuse, pharma, pharmaceuticals, lust of any character, attraction to social media? Is it a response to a spirit of anger connected to a root of bitterness towards someone or something? What is it? Come on, tonight, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. Beloved, a non-compliance to a believer's surrender to God in anything, any issue, will slow down as to hinder and to obstruct as to delay the development of Holy Spirit working in you. To develop, to mature that same excellent spirit that was found in the lives of Daniel and the three Hebrew children, Daniel 5, 12. You know, and in part, I, I say this just out of, out of the air here. Because I do understand, and my heart goes out when God will direct somebody to come to Genesis or to any other church or other ministry, and they come in, and they're here for a while, and all of a sudden they decide to, well, to get up and go. They miss out on the blessing. Come on, they, they miss out on the extra anointing that God is pouring out upon their lives. And for whatever reason, they've, they've justified in their minds uh, you know, to, um, what's the expression here? To reason, sorry, to reason in their minds to justify why they're leaving. It's to no fault of the Holy Spirit. Come on. In Daniel 5.12, it was because an extraordinary spirit Knowledge and insight, the ability to interrupt, dr interpret dreams, clarify riddles, and solve complex problems were found in this Daniel because God had anointed him. That same identical characteristic is revealed in the life of God's son Jesus as he was given knowledge and insight to solve complex problems. The woman with the issue of blood is somebody in the house. Amen. Blind Bartimaeus. As, he, as Jesus was given knowledge and insight to solve complex problems, to heal the sick, to open blind eyes, cause the lame to walk and raise the dead to life because, because God had anointed him. Let's get up on the screen. Saints, let this go deep in your spirit. Listen to what God's speaking to, to us tonight. Acts 10, 38. Come on. Let's everybody read this together. Ready? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Why? Because God was with him. Is somebody in the house? Do you understand why God has anointed you? He's placed the same anointing that he placed upon his life, a son, sons like Jesus, for that purpose. God has anointed you. God has anointed you for a purpose that you would be a vessel used by him to reveal God's glory into this earth, touching the lives of his people. Come on. Come on. Oh, Rabbi Siki, Zerebeke. And I get it. Man, I'm the first one when there's a prophet or an apostle speaking or teaching. I'm, I'm the first one to get in there and get in the front row. I get it. I get it. I get it because I understand God has a potential to work through that individual to speak into my life, to encourage me for what God is asking me to do. But there's something even more profound, greater than that. Because when you go to the apostle of apostles, when you go to the prophet of prophets, and you seek him out, God God will impart unto you the very thing you've been asking him to do for you. Because it doesn't come from the apostle or the prophet. It comes through the apostle and prophet, but it comes from Abba himself. Siddiqui. Beloved, to understand God's word is to receive knowledge 
from God's word. I'm going to say that again. To understand God's word is to receive knowledge from God's word. And when a believer receives knowledge, that believer will abound. They will become plentiful, full of God's strength to surrender to what God is asking them to do for his kingdom in the earth and his beloved who live in the earth. Releasing a message. Reading the word of God. Study the word of God. Sift the word knowing when is the appropriate time for it to be released. Because if you don't, it will bring confusion and misunderstanding to what God's word is intended for that moment in the life of, that, of, of an assembly or an individual. It's got to be God's timing. Jesus. And we release this to every son and daughter of our living God. Hear this, saints. Hold on, let's go. Let's, let's do this. On that day of surrender, when you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and all of your sins were removed and abolished, you were given that same spirit of wisdom, counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge of the fear of the Lord to rest upon you, Isaiah 11.2. And on that day, you were given the introduction to surrender. It was the prelude, the introduction to begin working out your own salvation daily. Somebody say daily. daily. Your ability to surrender daily to salvation also includes your daily surrender for healing, your daily surrender for deliverance, your daily deliverance from anything that is hindering you from developing that excellent spirit that is revealed in the life of Jesus. Saints, do not allow your enemy to stop you from going to the altar of God daily to surrender. Anything that is hindering you from gaining an excellent spirit, whether it be fear, anger, hate, unbelief, doubt, accusations, come on somebody, lies and deceptions, please hear this tonight and allow it to go into reserve a place in your spirit, man. Are you ready? Yes. Come on, are you ready? Masandore yes. You will always become subject to what you believe. Now, there are some who are not here tonight who should be here. Lord, show me in the spirit. I should be here to hear this. You will always become subject to what you believe. Because evidently, God is wanting us to get his attention to these issues of life so we can mature with an excellent spirit operating in us. The Bible tells us you become subject to what you believe. Now, you're all here, born again. You believe you're born again? Yes. I said you believe you're born again? Yes. Filled with the Holy Spirit of God? Yes. Amen? Amen then you're subject to that truth. Now, often in, in one of the approaches we have here as a deliverance ministry is individuals will come in and as God begins to speak in the lies, speak a prophetic word or a word of knowledge and begin to expose those lies and those, those uh, deceptions of the enemy. Hello? As God speaks a prophetic word into their lives and they believe it, they're going to receive it. But when the enemy comes in the lives of an individual into the minds and tries to reject that word by bringing doubt and unbelief, and then the individual believes that lie, they're going to be subject to that lie. Is it making sense? Yes. Brother Michael, we've been here before. What again? Yes, again. And again. And again. And again, until God has us stop. See, eventually God is wanting us to get his attention to these issues. For what purpose? To be set free. And to be free indeed. 
Beloved, surrendering to God must come, must become a daily routine. Dying to self must become a daily routine. And I just, I can't speak for anybody else here, but, you know, those, those days I, I'll, I'll be going about my father's business and something comes up, the Spirit of God will, uh, will speak to me and remind me of something that I've acted upon that I shouldn't have acted upon. And I think, again? Come on. Another deliverance, again, today, again, again? God says, until you totally surrender. Every, until you completely surrender that thing unto me, it will come up again and again and again. Amen? Amen? God's word to us tonight is don't, do not allow yourselves to become a, whoa. Hit the wrong button here. Do not allow yourselves to become a victim to lies and deceptions. Get your eyes and thinking off what your enemies are doing towards you and get your eyes and your minds of what Jesus has already done for you. This, I've got to be careful, this approach and this continual conversations that uh, we have with individuals about the devil this and the devil that and the witches and the war and all these things. What are you going to believe? Come on, if you're going to believe those lies, you're going to become subject to those lies. But I know according to the word of God that his word says to me that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I'm believing in that word. God has made me the head and not the tail. Amen. God has given me power over all the power of the enemy. So when these thoughts come to your mind or when, when the enemy will use flesh and blood to come to me and tell me something that is contrary to what I know what his word says for me, out the back door, baby. It's out the back door in Jesus' mighty name. All right. Since you can be prophesied to, you can be given a word of knowledge by God. You can even have hands laid on you, anointed with oil as a point of contact, reading and studying the word of God, expecting God to move on your behalf. But until you surrender, there's somebody in the house. Until you surrender those things that God intends for you to surrender, the issues of life that are before you will not change. They won't change. It becomes a repetitious cycle. It's like being on a merry-go-round or a carousel. You get on the horse and you keep going around and around and around and around, and you don't dismantle yourself from that horse. It'll keep coming back and keep coming back. But when those things come your way and you put a stop to that carousel, it will end. You can get off in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 